China is referred as the world factory as 30% of things manufactured in today's world are done in China. Hey, but hold on. Nigeria may be taking a big chunk of that manufacturing percentage if everything goes as planned, especially if this new city finally takes off. And I'm talking about the planned Enyimba Economic City. What is Enyimba Economic City? Who are those behind this transformational project? Why is this project likely to succeed or fail? And what have been done so far and what is the state of the project right now? When is this project expected to be completed? Well, let's examine these five points in today's video. And stick around to the end of this video because it's going to be an interesting one. The Enyimba Economic City is dubbed to become the first integrated global business hub in Sub-Saharan Africa, which will be focusing majorly on manufacturing, with other auxiliary drivers such as logistics, medical, entertainment, education, commerce, lifestyle, smart residency, and aviation. The Enyimba Economic City is located in Owaza, in Abia State, Nigeria. It covers about 9,464 hectares of Greenfield City land. To put that in perspective, that means the Enyimba Economic City is going to be larger than the Oweri Town, or Niche Town, or the current Abar Town. As an integrated business hub, it has its own inland port and airport. It is also strategically located near the existing seaport in One and Port Akot, which is about 45 km from the Enyimba Economic City. The Enyimba Economic City is located central to the 9th Southeast and South South State in Nigeria and also located along the eastern rail line that runs from Port Harcourt to Medugri connecting the northern states in Nigeria. The Enyimba Economic City has been designated as a special economic free zone which is expected to play a major role in the Africa Continental Trade Agreement. Although the Enyimba Economic City core industry will be manufacturing, it has five major townships or districts. The first being the business district, which will hold world-class premium offices, commercial retail, hospitality, and covering about 1,131 hectares of land space. The central business district also will host the knowledge and educational zone, which will house university, Enyimba Institute of Technology, Enyimba Vocational and Innovation Institute, as well as research centers. The second district will be the Health, Wellness, City and Knowledge and Innovation District. This will serve as a major healthcare destination in the eastern region as well as Nigeria. There are already several groups of over 90 doctors in the diaspora that are working to collaborate on this project. This district will cover a land with about 279 hectares. The third is the Industrial Township and Logistic District, which is also the largest part of the Enyimba Economic City, covering a land space of 5,619 hectares. This district will host the manufacturing zone with dedicated airport and inland port that is linked to the seaport in One, Port Harcourt, and the upcoming Aquaibom Seaport. The fourth district is the residential smart township covering a landmass of 1,612 and will host a smart mini estate for comfortable lifestyle. While the last district will be the entertainment and recreational city covering about 291 hectares of land space, this space is expected to serve like a Disneyland in Nigeria. I'm the private sector lead for a major new city in Nigeria. It is a 9,464 hectares of a new, a new city. And it's going to be a major manufacturing floor for Africa. The deal, we're looking for fund for the first phase. Uh, that's one. We're looking for manufacturing transfers too. 
we want companies that will come to the zone to manufacture because it's uh, it's a place that has infrastructure, which is a major problem with uh, manufacturing in Nigeria. Power, water, communication, and, and all that. This project is private sector driven with collaboration with the federal and state government. The private company currently own about 20% share of the Inba Economic City Development Company, while the federal government also own about 20% equity share. The Ibe State government owns about 6% why the host community owns about 4%, making it a 50% share. Why the other 50% share is expected to be sold to the public at IPO, probably within the first three years of the construction of the project. But let's talk about the third point. Why would this project likely to succeed than fail, given that similar projects in the past probably have failed? Well, first, this project is private sector driven with government support, so it's not from the government fund or government post. Secondly, the Inbe Economic City will run on a different custom immigration tax and administrative policy and processes, different from what is currently run in Nigeria, which is a big encouragement for many manufacturing companies who will be looking to transfer their manufacturing location to Nigeria. So essentially, doing business in the Inbe Economic City will be much, much easier, faster, a lot of incentives that will encourage businesses to run efficiently and effectively and make a lot of profit. This place will likely be the next destination for many manufacturing companies, given that all the required infrastructure will be in place. From having a dedicated 504 megawatt gas power generating station to having an inland port, airport, as well as linkage to seaport and rail transportation. This means all infrastructure required for any manufacturing company is already in place, which is also a big encouragement for many companies who will be looking to transferring their current location of manufacturing to Nigeria. And also, Nigeria has one of the largest teaming youth population who are ready for employment because many are already underemployed or not employed. So, which provide a very good cheap labor for the manufacturing companies. Also, the African Development Bank have already invested $450 million into this project. While other companies like the Shandong Rui Technology Group, which is a Chinese Texa and clothing company, is also looking to invest $2 billion for a full clothing value chain production in Nigeria. And that will include setting up a textiles and garment manufacturing establishment in the Nyimba Economic City. There are also other companies who are looking to turn gas into methanol in the Nyimba Economic City, as well as other manufacturing companies who have indicated interest to come down into the city. So at this point, basically, both policy, infrastructure, fund, political way all seems to be in favor of this project, which will likely make it to succeed than to fail. So what have been done so far and what is the state of this project for now? Beside all the other background work that's currently being done, the federal government has also given its backing to this project by signing an agreement with the state government. The Imba Economic City has been designated as the Special Economic Free Zone. Some funding and first uptake of tenancy space have already been secured. While the first phase design has been completed and the groundbreaking construction is expected to commence the first quarter of this year, 2022. Lastly, when is this project expected to be completed? Well, that I don't know as of the time of this video. But the work done so far on this project seems very solid. And if you really like to learn more about this project, you can check out the project documentation information linked on the description below. This project is expected to create about 625,000 direct jobs. Well, I will be dropping more updates on this project before the year runs out. Hopefully with projects like this and many more around the country, Nigeria will finally rise up to take its place in the Committee of Nations. And if you like this documentary and would like to learn more about documentaries like this so you can know what's happening in Nigeria, subscribe, like, share, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Goodbye, Cody.